The Morning Show starts right now with a breaking news alert. A search for answers after a tragic shooting in Pensacola. I can tell you it's a uh, horrible thing that took place. And we're getting to the bottom of it. Uh, all of the investigators are there now, and they're studying it very closely. And a uh, terrible thing. The new piece of evidence that has some believing in the shooting could be considered a terror attack. Much of the country is searching for answers after yesterday's shooting at Naval Air Station, Pensacola. The Defense Department says it will now review measures for screening foreign students. Less than 24 hours ago, a gunman who was a member of the Saudi Air Force training to be a pilot opened fire on base, killing three people and injuring eight others. The gunman has been identified as Mohammed Al-Shamrani. He was eventually shot dead by responding deputies. And right now, investigators are trying to look into a possible motive. And Zach, it appears those investigators have found an online manifesto linked to that shooting. That's correct, Alicia. Police believe the manifesto was written by the shooter, but they're working to determine if it's legitimate. Some of the statements written have investigators thinking this could have been a terror plot. One quote reads, I'm against evil, and America as a whole has turned into a nation of evil. Another reads, quote, I'm not against you for just being American. I don't hate you because your freedoms. I hate you because every day you're supporting, funding, and committing crimes not, not only against Muslims, but also humanity. Six other Saudi nationals were arrested near the base shortly after the attack. A source tells the New York Times three of them were seen filming the entire incident as it unfolded. Many questions, of course, need to be answered at this hour, and now several agencies are working to gather as many details as possible. Daryl Forges has more on where they go from here. We are not prepared at this hour to confirm what may have motivated the shooter to commit this horrific act today. The FBI has launched a global investigation into the killer who opened fire at the Naval Air Station in Pensacola. King Solomon of Saudi Arabia just called to express his sincere condolences. The gunman has been identified as Muhammad Al-Shamrani, a Saudi national and second lieutenant in the Saudi Royal Air Force in the U.S. for aviation training since 2017. A law enforcement source says he was vetted coming into the country and a background check ran after the shooting appears to show nothing of concern. The king said that the Saudi people are greatly angered by the barbaric actions of the shooter and that this person in no way, shape or form represents the feelings of the Saudi people. The Saudi foreign ministry echoed those sentiments, saying in a statement, quote, the Saudi security agencies will provide full support to the U.S. authorities to investigate the circumstances of this crime. Despite condemnation of the attack by the Saudi government, Florida Senator Rick Scott is now calling for a review of military programs that train foreign nationals in the U.S., saying in a statement, quote, there is no reason we should be providing state-of-the-art military training to people who wish us harm. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. News for Jax has a crew in Pensacola trying to gather more details and talking to those in the community who've been impacted by this shooting. Now, coming up at 8, we're going to be checking in with News for Jax reporter Eric Avigny, who will be joining us with a live report. Breaking news closer to home this morning. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is investigating an overnight shooting in the Mixintown neighborhood. Police say a man was shot in his lower body, and now they are looking for that shooter. News for Jack's reporter Brittany Muller just arrived on scene. Brittany, what have you learned out there? The man was shot multiple times in his lower body. He was taken to the hospital where he is being treated with non-life threatening injuries. And we just arrived on scene. This is what we're looking at right now. JSO and the crime scene unit here. We've seen the crime scene technicians gathering evidence here on Lewis Street. Now JSO says it arrived in response to a person shot in this area in Mixton Town just before two o'clock this morning. And when they arrived, they found a man with multiple gunshot wounds. JSO 
CSO says it happened here on Lewis Street. They're also checking out the Clemente Drive just one block from here as well. Again, the victim was taken to a local hospital where he has non life threatening injuries and JSO says the shooter is still out there. JSO is investigating. If you know anything about this shooting overnight, call police or Crime Stoppers immediately. That number 1-866-845-TIPS. Reporting live this morning from the Mixed in Town neighborhood, Brittany Muller, Channel 4, the local station. Brittany, thank you very much. Breaking overnight in Jacksonville's Holiday Hill neighborhood, two people are dead after a shooting at Arabian Court. Police arrived to the scene around 1030 last night. Both victims had gunshot wounds. One of them was dead at the scene. The other died at the hospital. Neither victim has been identified yet. If you know anything about this, police want to hear from you. Also breaking overnight in San Mateo, JSO needs your help finding a missing woman. 83-year-old Audrey Roberts was last seen on Immunis Road. She's been missing since about 6 p.m. last night. Right now, details are limited surrounding her disappearance. Anyone with any information on her whereabouts should call the sheriff's office immediately. News for Jax will continue to track the latest from these developing stories. You can get the latest when we're not on air. Just visit our website, newsforjax.com, or download our News for Jax app. In a crime alert, a man is dead after he was shot inside a car in Brentwood. This happened near Perry and Birch Streets. Police say he died when he was at the hospital. Investigators are telling News for Jax they believe a red SUV is involved here. Corley Peel has more on what witnesses are saying. I spoke with several witnesses off camera who say they saw a car pull up and shoot the man in a car. Beyond the crime scene unit vans and tape, officers searched this small car parked next to a vacant lot after police say a man was shot inside of it Friday evening. Investigators say someone called 911 around 5 p.m. about shots fired near Perry and Bird Streets. Police say the man died at the hospital. A tow truck drove the car away hours after the shooting. JSO is now searching for a red SUV that was seen leaving the area after the shooting. Neighbors who heard the gunshots tell me, unfortunately, crime is not unusual in their neighborhood. According to JSO's crime map, in the past month, 36 crimes were reported within a half mile of the shooting. Those include burglary, theft, and assaults. At this time, police have not identified the man who died. The shooter is still on the run, so if you know anything about this shooting, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers. Reporting from JSO, Corley Peel, Channel 4, The Local Station. 8 to 10 people were forced from their homes after a fire broke out at the Bluff House Apartments in Clay County. This complex is on Wells Road. When firefighters arrived, they found a top floor apartment on fire. It took about 30 minutes to put it out. The fire was contained to that one unit. Three apartments had smoke and water damage. No one was hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. She spent most of her adult life helping people as a chiropractor, but one reckless decision tore a local family apart. Kim Johnston will spend the next 15 years in prison. She was sentenced yesterday for killing police officer Kathy Adams and injuring Adams' husband and children in a car accident. Johnston expressed her remorse in court. She also insisted she didn't drink that much, despite blood tests that revealed she was inebriated. I'm here today to express my heartfelt apologies. I'm sorry and remorseful for the horrific fatal car accident that changed and affected many innocent lives. I innocently went to meet a few friends I haven't seen in a while. I had four beers at a restaurant, but that is all. I did not do anything else beforehand. Well, you know, I believe that in order for me to fully heal, um, that I can't can't linger in, uh, like I said in my speech, in the hate and anger and frustration. The only way that I would be able to fully heal is if I forgave her for what she did to our family. Kathy Adams' husband, Jack, who is recovering from the loss of his wife, and as you heard, explained he's learning to forgive the woman who killed her. Kathy's mother also spoke in court. As she left the stand, she told Johnston that she forgives her. 2019 has seen a rise in homicides in Jacksonville. There have been nearly 140 as of the end of this week. And we've also seen more than 350 shootings. But this year also marked the beginning of Cure Violence program. Representatives say they're at work right now to create change within the community. One of the mediators spoke with News for Jacks reporter Lauren Verno about the impact it's trying to make. 
What do you say to people that say Cure Bonds is not doing enough? If I tell them that, listen, we're doing a lot. You know, we're doing a lot. And if I, you know, if they say that we're not doing enough, I say to them, well, come help. Come help. You still, you know the community just like us. <laughs> Since Cure Violence started almost six months ago, the team estimates it's mediated about 52 situations so far. They believe 37 of those would have led to a shooting. Coming up at 945, a trauma surgeon at UF Health is going to sit down and talk with us. Marie Crandall is not new to Cure Violence. She watched the program grow in Chicago, and she's going to talk about the program as it grows right here in Jacksonville. Well, between parties and family dinners, chances are you're going to be doing a little bit of baking this holiday season, but there are plenty of health risks that come with that delicious batch of cookies. Yeah, still ahead, things to keep in mind before turning on your oven. And we're taking a live look outside from our South Bank Sky Camera, a beautiful, chilly start to our day. We're going to be checking in with Danielle Giuliano in just a moment to get the latest on our weekend forecast. But first, Flu season might peak just in time for the holidays. The last time activity picked up this quickly was more than 15 years ago. The new numbers released from the CDC and the best way you can protect your family. That's coming up right after the break. News 4 Jax, covering the big local stories from your neighborhood.